Greetings. So today I'm going to be making a video about why money is worthless. So you're probably thinking, what do you mean? Money is not worth, you know, I, I work for my money. I do good. I make six figures a year. I make six figures a year. You know, I'm doing good. I have money. I need money to do things. I have to pay for my daughter's tuition. I have to spend my money on this drink. And I'm here to tell you why that means of payment of value transfer isn't actually a value transfer at all. So this is you, right? You you have your job. And you're working your job. You know, you're you're gonna you're nine to five, you're you know, you're doing your thing, right? And then you get paid, and then you know, you you know, buy something cool, you go out. Right, you know, go get some beers, maybe drop a few grand on a PlayStation, you know, just normal, right? Maybe you go to a football game, maybe, right? So, what we really have to ask ourselves, okay, so what is this process then? So, I give my time, I get my money, then I get a reward, right? So what is really the intermediary then? What is the thing that I'm giving so that I can get, right? So question, is it numbers on a screen? Right. You look at your phone and it's just a number on a screen, right? And this is how most people will live their lives. They'll go about their lives and they'll save their money. They'll be like this guy right here, working their job. They love their job. They're making six figures a year. They're making 200K a year. Awesome, right? They're doing good. Their family respects them, right? They're not doing a bad job. And then they get their entire lives to this point so then they can retire comfortably. Okay, so again, we're drawing back to the original conclusion. What is the intermediary? right? I'm putting in this work. I'm giving my time for an intermediary to pleasure, right? This is what most people think is pleasure. Retirement. Oh, I'm going to retire and travel. Okay. What does this see then? So again, intermediary, I'm giving my time where I could be spending with my family or my loved ones, right? I'm sacrificing that to make something so that I can have a higher pleasure, a better life than where I currently am. But think about it. What is the intermediary? Your life, desired life, retirement life, travel retired. What is, what, what, what's here? Money. So again, what really is money? Is it just numbers on a screen? Like what's, going on with money. So let's talk about the creation of money because a lot of people don't understand this and it's pretty straightforward because they pick up a dollar that their boss gives them or they look at their paycheck and they put it in their bank and they look on their phone and then they just see like digits, right? That's on a screen that's artificial that just doesn't exist. It's just, can you, you can't touch that. It doesn't make sense, right? So let's talk about the true creation of money from kind of the origin of man. So I know this is kind of a modern day depiction, but we would always trade commodities, things like gold, things like cattle, things like fur coats. <clears throat> Up in Canada in the, I think the late 1800s, there was very big fur trade, um, like trading posts, and that was just crazy, the market for that. So what's the exchange then? I'm doing something, right? And I'm giving you something tangible that I can touch. Okay, that makes sense, right? Um, you know, I'm going to give you some milk. And you're going to give me some, um, maybe a fur coat. Or I'm going to give you some gold. And you're going to give me, you know, your, your sheep, All right? Okay, that, that, like, to me, that makes sense, right? I'm giving this and I'm getting that. Makes sense, right? And then we got into coins, forms of currency. And this is where it gets a little bit, it still makes sense, but it gets maybe a little bit more confusing, right? You have your, you know, your empire that you live under. Maybe you're in the Roman empire. 
And the, the empire makes these things, these little round things called coins. But these coins are made out of gold or silver. And they in itself are a value. Like it's a gold coin. Like I could go and like trade that. It's basically like if I were to just find gold. It's the same thing, but just in an easy format. Trackable, done. Pretty straightforward, right? And then we go into banknotes. Oh, this gets where it gets even a little bit more confusing, right? So this is an old US banknote. And basically what would happen is, right, I would go to a bank, right? Walk into the bank, give them money, right? And they were to give me or, or give them gold or give them whatever. And they would give me a banknote that I could go back and get what I put in the bank for. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. But the only problem with this was that if you lived in Texas, for example, and you went to California, there would be different banks, right? So you'd be going in with your banknote and... They'd be, you'd be like, Hey, can I get my, my whatever? And they'd be like, Hey, that's a Texas bank. So this is where it gets even more interesting. So at the time, the, f there were six men who basically gathered and these six men owned about a quarter of the world's wealth. I know a quarter. Uh, they were, so Nelson Aldrich who was the son-in-law of Rockefeller. Then we have A. P. at Andrew, Henry Davidson, Arthur Shelton, Frank Vanderlip, and Paul Warburg. So these guys were the owners of basically the five biggest banks in all of the US, all right? And what was happening was these banks, right, were, taking there were these banks were the biggest banks in the world but there were others that were opening and they were taking up market share so these guys gathered and they're like hey what if we could do something to you know change the system so that we don't have to you know how, how we can remove our competition we won't have to compete right and then this is where the genius idea struck them genius idea absolute amazing idea right to start a, a mafia style business, a cartel, right? So what is a cartel? If you define a cartel, a cartel is basically the definition of a cartel is to remove the competition by leveraging yourself in certain aspects. So basically destroying competition and solely, you know, allowing yourself to just have you as the market that makes sense the cartel right a cartel so these five guys came together and they're like hey what if we made one currency right and then sold that currency to the united states right privately so let's get going in this so what happens then with the federal reserve because i'm sure all of you guys are aware what the federal reserve is but you're like oh the gov it's the government the government prints money you're actually wrong. So what happens is the government comes to the Federal Reserve. Hey, you know, I need $10 billion. Awesome. The Federal Reserve then, you know, sells the money to them for treasury bonds. The government gives them treasury bonds for, you know, basically something that they can cash back out. And then what the Fed does is they take these treasury bonds and they sell them to the public, right? The taxpayers. Hmm. So... We had our money from the government given, or we had our money from the Fed given to the government, right? And then the government takes this money, puts it into circulation, right? This is where it gets crazy. Puts it into circulation, gives it to banks. And then the Fed sells the money for treasury bonds, which then are bought by the public, right? Which then the public buy with the money that the government originally acquired right and then the fed gets their money back because they sell the bonds 
and then the loophole continues. So stick with me here. And then what the Fed or any bank is allowed to do is they're allowed to invest only about 90% of what they're given. So if I give you $100 or if I give the bank $100, then basically that bank has to keep uh, 10 of those dollars of the 100 in their reserve. Um, but then they can invest the other 90%. So that gives them, you know, a 9x leverage, which is quite nice, right? So basically, in short form, they can take the money you give them, right? Sell it to other people who then also, as you can see, sell it to other people, right? And then she puts it in the bank. And then they can sell it again to other people they put in the bank. They sell it again to other people they put in the bank. And then you see how this loophole continues. It's all debt based, giving them a 9x leverage. So basically taking 100 bucks and just making 900 out of existence, just out of nowhere. And then we have the 3%. So as of right now, only 3% of the U.S. money supply is actual paper. I know. Crazy. 90% is digital. Hmm. So if you go into a restaurant, if you go into a mall, I'm sure there's going to be a few stores in there that are going to say, hey, you know, we don't accept cash. COVID. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. And then, you know, this is where you come along. You come along and you're like, yeah, I just got my, you know, I got my 5K bonus. I feel so awesome about myself, right? I just got a 5K bonus. I'm going to be able to take Monica and the kids to, you know, Florida, right? And then you realize that these banks are just 9X leveraging and just making money out of thin air by literally like selling the bonds they acquire, to the people who are taxpayers. And then what does that do? That just puts more stress on the taxpayers and less stress on them. They're making the money, but they're getting the reward. They're reaping the benefit. So as you can see, these one, two, three, four, five top American banks, these were the five that attended the Jekyll Island conference, and they are all tightly associated with the Federal Reserve. I'm sure you're not really going to be able to find exactly if they are online, but if you drop back to their original owners, those are the people who attended Jekyll Island, right? Who started the Federal Reserve. And what is crazy, what is absolutely nuts, is these are the same banks that have the money that get loans from the Federal Reserve. So they're constantly getting money from the Federal Reserve. These are American banks, right? Then they're paying them back in other ways, bonds, whatever, that the government can potentially also sell to the public. And then it's just like, it's like having a hot potato, right? And just continually passing it to the next person until that last person who's the middle class taxpayer is holding it with his hands and his hands are blistering because it's so hot. Right. So these people who own these banks, they're making a ton of money and they're making it by not providing any value to the marketplace, by literally just fractionalizing and monetizing a debt based system. So it's all based through debt with, like I said, this 9x leverage. It's all about how they can loan that 90 percent of the original investment. But how do we know that this guy didn't get this 2000 from a loan? from another bank. And this work gets even more deep because yes, these banks are all connected, right? Through the Federal Reserve. So it all comes from one origin. So when this guy's depositing 2000, how do we know that the, he didn't get it from another bank? But does it even matter? Because all the banks are simulated with the Federal Reserve and that money is coming from an exchange of value with the government, right? which is then being passed off to the taxpayers. So it's a deep rabbit hole. Um, I recommend you to definitely dive down it 
and educate yourself. But I just want you to kind of go through this mentality of, okay, this, like, what am I spending my time on? What really is money, right? 97% of money is just this. It's just a fucking number. If I change that three to an eight, no one is like, it's just a number. Like, it's just a number. Like, what is, you know, we need gold. This makes sense. Like, to humans, this makes sense, right? And I'm sure most people think they're just like, yeah, my bank, no, I can go and get gold with it. You can. But the system is so flawed. So I want you to really think about this, right? You know, you're working, you're exchanging your value, you're exchanging your time, right? For a median to get to, you know, to get to your goal. You're exchanging the present moment, which is, you know, it's worth quite a bit. And your time for something that is called money that doesn't even exist. To get to this point, we're in a retirement home. And I just want you to realize that I want, if you're watching this video, what I want you to do is I want you to drive to your nearest retirement home. Just drive there and just walk around. If someone asks, hey, do you need help? Yeah, sure. I'm just looking for my grandmother, whatever. Just go and look. And the vibe of a, de- uh, the, the vibe of a retirement home is extremely depressing. Extremely, right? So... Just realize that, you know, you're working your whole life for nothing. So I hope this makes you feel better about yourself. Uh, and I hope, I hope this makes your paradigm slightly shift in terms of what your priorities are and realizing that this system is corrupt and it could potentially be on the brink of a collapse.